Hi, thanks for joining us today. Uh, my name is Thomas Johnson. I'm the Curator of Performance and Moving Image at Dunlop Art Gallery and RPL Film Theatre. I'd like to acknowledge that I'm located on Oxkana Kasatake, also known as Pile of Bones, also known as Regina, located on Treaty 4 territory and the traditional territory of the Nehewak, Soto, Lakota, Dakota, Nakota, and the homeland of the Métis. And it's my great pleasure to invite you to this uh, screening and discussion of Owl's Opera and a Painted Nettle Plant. This is part of Josh Thorpe's Unusual Music Exchange Residency at CJTR 91.3 Community Radio and in partnership with YYZ Artist Outlet in Toronto. This screening will feature music videos of Renee Lear and Josh Thorpe, followed by a discussion. I welcome all our viewers to contribute to this dialogue via the chat to the right, and we'll have the opportunity to bring any questions you have up towards the end. And now it's my pleasure to introduce our two presenters. Renee Lear is an experimental video artist, performer, photographer, and filmmaker. Her practice engages both playfully and critically with the material, instruments, and processes that produce moving images. Her recent work includes video, video installation, and video performance, video mixing in live environments, animation, and GIF montage. She works both solo and in collaboration with other artists, musicians, DJs, chefs, and dancers. Her work has been shown in art galleries, festivals, underground cinemas, performance spaces, dance clubs, music venues, and ad hoc public spaces, and has been exhibiting nationally and internationally. Renee Lear lives in works in Toronto, Canada. And Josh Thorpe is an artist, musician, and writer based in Glasgow, Scotland. Thorpe's released two albums uh, of songs, Love and Weather, which we recently produced with YYZ uh, and enjoying listening to right now, and Scrappy Art You Can Dance To in 2018. Uh, he also has one experimental music, one album of experimental music, Flock Light, in 2005. And Thorpe recently launched the Unusual Music Exchange, an un online form of unusual music, which we'll be discussing today. So welcome to you both. I'm going to... Uh, start uh, allowing you to talk and we'll um, be sharing videos. So there is some technical difficulties, but we'll uh, hopefully be able to uh, resolve those in the course of the today. So thanks very much. Take thanks, it. Tom. Oh, it's just you and me, Renee. There we go. Hello. Well, hearing Tom introduce you there, you, you're so punk rock. <laughs> yeah, I'm putting a, a, a post-it over my face here, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I thank you. That's the, one of the nicest things I've re anyone's ever said about me. <laughs> well, you're also an extraordinary uh, art, video artist, and uh, we're so today. I'm looking forward to watching some of your, well, some of our work together, but followed by a bunch of pieces of yours. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm excited to to share that with everybody. Well, um, I don't know. By way of introduction, um, maybe we should say also that following this, there will be a, a radio show on CJTR that Rene and I did together, um, where we're just listening to a bunch of um, tracks of music that uh, that we're both interested in, um, chatting about them and listening for about an hour. Uh, that's at 3 p.m. Uh, Regina time. And... Uh, Yes, and we've just collaborated on a couple on a couple of projects over the last couple of years. And um, Dunlop Art Gallery and YYZ has you know, put this together to um, you know to to screen these two works that we've done together. And and following those two, we're going to see some of Renee's work, which um, is quite unusual as well. Should we say anything about the first video before we? Um, uh, yeah, I guess so. I guess we could introduce it in some way. What would, what would you say about it? <laughs> well, it's called Ways Home. Uh, and it was made over the past year. It was begun during lockdown of uh, mm -hmm. 2020. I live in Scotland. Um, I live in Toronto. In Glasgow, yeah. And so, um, you know, my, my partner, Emily uh, Smith-Dix, and I were you know, just experiencing lockdown at the beginning of, of COVID 2020. And um, I started to make these little videos and asked Renee to, you know, collaborate with me on putting something together. So um, I don't know how much we want to say more about it. 
uh, before the, showing it? The yeah, the, just maybe just that the, the material is is um, provided by Josh and and Emily. I think Emily also did a, a lot of shooting, um, and and I and then sent it to me, and then I was I, I did the editing, mixing, uh, post production side of things. So uh, that's that's kind of how we organized it. Okay, well, great. Let's let's look at it. it's what. How long is this? <laughs> how long is this video? Six minutes okay. and thirty seconds long. Okay, thanks. Good. <laughs> so let, let's look at ways home, and then we can talk about it for a few minutes. Okay.
Right. That was Way's home. <laughs> so maybe we should say a few words about Way's home uh, before we move on to some other stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of interesting to um, to see that film had kind of happened in two parts because the first bit was filmed in the early days of lockdown and then the second bit was filmed almost a year later and um well you can see see it because my hair is longer <laughs> and right. i think i don't know renee can you see a difference in the maybe the attitude of the shots i don't know that's i don't mean to put you on the spot but it just occurs to me that probably uh emily's and my attitude in the house in the in our flat was probably quite different yeah i mean i what what i can tell you is i mean you provided me um with a lot of material and a lot of it i didn't use so there's like twice as much that i didn't use that um than everyone's seeing in the video right so um at, but, what, what was wrong with that stuff no it was great actually. <laughs> you know i think I, we talked about we could make a, a short film about um it making eggs um, there's so much beautiful egg making material. It's like, yeah, at, at any rate, yeah, no, there's lots of really good material that, that didn't make it into this video because at some point you have to like stop making a video. But um, the, I can tell you because I've seen all of that footage, I can tell you that there's a difference in, in the shooting for sure. Yeah, it was a lot more still. Um, I had to ask you to shoot some some more movement. You just, you just you guys just stop moving. You're just lots of still camera shots. And in the beginning, it was just like the camera was going all over the place. Um, and uh, yeah, and then you, it just quieted right down and got very, very still. So um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was not like we weren't aware of that at all. So I, I think what yeah. I mean, maybe what happened is at the beginning of COVID, we were quite conscious about, you know, be, being aware of domestic space. And I mean, the idea for the film was really to become more more thoughtful about where we were living and how we were living there. Mm -hmm. we, we we lived in a different apartment at the time and it was very small. And, uh, you know, we actually had to have quite a, like a careful conversation around how we use the space and share it and, and treat it with some care, right? So I think making that film was a little bit about caring for the, the space that we were in and how we were going to inhabit it. Um, and that maybe it worked because if, if I don't know, at the end, if at the end, <clears throat> it certainly sounds like maybe we're less um, preoccupied with, you know, what, s s less searching for something <laughs> anyway. <laughs> By that time, we've pretty much figured out our flat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you just kind of resign yourself to the, the, the eggs. Sickness. <laughs> Um, but your treatment, Renee, of uh, of the like I like I know your work pretty well, and I know that you like layers, visual layers, and you love the complexity yeah. that comes with that. And I think it it really um, it creates this uh, uncanny kind of space um, from something very mundane. Yeah, that the the um, the layering of stuff comes from it's, it's informed my, by my video mixing practice. So when I I, I have a standalone video mixer with like a T bar, right? And uh, you always have more than one camera feed coming in at a time, and so you're always looking for ways to to combine images. So, um, uh, so I uh, that just kind of seeps into my regular video editing. Um, practice as well. So uh, I think that's where it comes from. Um, and uh, yeah, I like looking at more than one thing at a time or making it all <laughs> one thing or <laughs> um, yeah, I, I work with layers like pretty constantly actually. Maybe that's not a bad way to segue to uh, more videos. What do you think? Yeah, let's let's um, I mean, the next video yeah. doesn't doesn't actually particularly link with that layered thing does it but no there are there are zero layers in the next video because i'm capable of different kinds of video editing <laughs> um yeah and but this is uh so this is a music video that that we did uh a couple of years ago 
and it's a song called Summer, um, and it features a family of barn owls. Um, and the the album is um, Scrappy Art Rock You Can Dance To, is that right? Yeah, you got yeah. it, yeah. <laughs> Um, which is a great album title. Um, and yeah, so this this video is, um, so it's Josh's song and he asked me to make a video for it. And I asked Josh if he liked Barn Owls and he said yes. And then, so this is this is that video. <laughs> like I said, Barn Owls are my favorite owls. Yeah, you were very enthusiastic about yeah. Barn Owls, which like, you know, gave me the green light to go ahead. <laughs> I once made a video myself of a saw wet owl, which is I think the smallest owl or one of the smallest. Um, but what what beautiful faces they have. <laughs> They're stunning. They're stunning creatures. Okay, well, shall we have a look at uh, the video, Summer? Let's do it. So 
<laughs> Barnells. Yeah, if you ever wondered what Barnells do on their own time, they lip sync my songs. <laughs> yeah. Well, earlier today I came home to um, evidence that my, my dog was using the television uh, remote control. <clears throat> good doggy. <laughs> He's a good boy. Um, so that was um, uh, uh, the owl, the footage was from an owl named uh, Molly, and that was like the, my first introduction, serious introduction to an owl box cam. And uh, I think these things are far more ubiquitous now. But uh, at the time, I hadn't really um, seen I, the, the footage. I shot it. I can't remember when I shot it, but a, a long time ago at this point. And um, it was a it was live when I watched it, and I was just so um is thrilled <laughs> excited to watch these owls like as as much as i could like i had this camera i basically had a a, a a a screen on my screen that showed the owls as as many hours as i was awake um and then i started recording the material and i have hours and hours of footage of these owls just like hanging out in their box and it's somewhere in texas um and uh, yeah, so that's that's where the I just started recording it because I thought, well, for sure, I'm going to want to look at these owls again because they're so beautiful. And uh, that's yeah, that's where the footage comes from. So it's compiled from um, footage that I recorded off my screen from an owl box in San Marcos, Texas, I think. <laughs> Do you think you know anything more about barn owls now that you've watched so many hours of them? Well, I, the, I mean, they have curious behavior that I didn't, I wasn't really aware of. Um, like the chattering, the chatter, they do a lot of like chattering. And, and I don't, I'm sure it's easy to find out why they're doing that. I don't know why they're doing it, but I've seen quite a bit of it. So I'm here to tell you they do it a lot, but I don't know why. <laughs> um, and, and some cuddling? They, they, they are, they touch a lot. Yeah. They're always, they're all, they, they like to like meld their bodies together and, yeah, that's an extraordinary form that they make together. I know, I know. It's like a sculpture. It's like a heart or something. Yeah. And um, yeah, and that one moment when the owl is devouring some prey, uh, is it a rabbit or some yeah, small it's, mammal? It's a hare. Yeah, that's intense. So that Molly has a partner named McGee. And McGee, we don't see McGee in, in this video, but he drops off a uh, fresh kill for her on a regular basis. So um, in, in that scene, uh, she downs the hindquarters of a, an, a, of a hare. And, uh, and then you can see her little, she's like, it's intense for her too. She's like, you know, breathing really hard to get that down. It's a lot of hard work for her. Um, but yeah, isn't that intense? Well, she was under, under a lot of pressure with the camera there. I know, know. right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't even know if it's right to be doing that actually, but the, to be recording animals without their knowledge i don't know if that's right but it's, it's, it's definitely something i've thought about since since um uh recording that material and, and gazing at it so intently for so long i'm not sure it's right <laughs> it's a well it's a, a, a totally bizarre thing to spend that even that much time even six minutes with <laughs> such an intimate sort of uh and yet mediated relationship to these to these owls so anyway well thanks for, <laughs> for for making that whether it was right or or not we'll leave for another conversation okay it's the whole other conversation yeah. <laughs> um so up next we have <laughs> this time you're safe but i'll kill you anyway sooner or later is that right that's correct. Yeah. Maybe um, I didn't pronounce it correctly. Oh, no, you can say it any way you want. Um, <laughs> um, all, all the ways of saying it are correct. Uh, so this is, um, uh, th this film actually premiered last night at a horror film festival in Lisbon called Motel X, um, and which is really exciting for me because I never thought I'd be in a horror film festival. And that's like, that's the best thing ever to be in a horror film festival. So um, I wish I could have gone, but um, COVID. So they were in person. So this is the first time it will be screened online. This is the, the North American premiere. Um, and to, uh, so, uh, but I will say like, we are getting a little bit of lag with our, with the internet stream. So 
um, this piece is gonna look, it's not gonna, gonna look right exactly, but we'll see what it looks like. It might be like its own piece separate from well, the original. <laughs> well, why don't, why don't you then say, say a word or two about what is happening in it just oh, so okay. that people yeah. can sort of frame that? Yeah, that's a good idea. So I, I refer to, I did a small body of work using this technique and I refer to it as an animation. And that's because in traditional animation styles, you take two frames of still images um, side by side to create movement and that's an animation. So with these, I take two frames of moving picture and um, from three or four different scenes from a film that are related in some way. So usually a, a little bit content wise, but also with some sort of formal quality of the image. Um, so in this case, I have three films that I'm editing together. They're um, Dario Argento Giallo films. Those are 1970s horror whodunits. It's a beautiful genre. Um, they're, they're gorgeous gorgeous to look at, gorgeous to listen to, and gory as well. So it's like the most beautiful gore you'll ever see. Um, and so uh, with these films, the, um, uh, the, the POV was used as a technique. POV means it stands for point of view. And that's when the camera stands in for the subject. So you, you are now, the, ca the camera is moving around as if it's the eyes of the person whose identity in this case is concealed because they're the killer. So it's a way of us getting to know the killer, what the killer does, the actions, what they look at, what they're doing without uh, revealing the identity. So um, I took all of the, and so this, these are killer POVs. It's all the killer's eyes we're looking through, through three different scenes. And then I edit them together two frames at a time to make one coherent scene. And it's just the killer in these different films, walking through hallways, just looking at stuff. They're just walking around looking at stuff because the killers do that. And <laughs> um, they're going upstairs and meandering down hallways and stuff. And so this is that kind of shot um, animated together as one coherent shot. And so it's super rapid fire editing. So when, you, when, when it lags, that's because it's lagging. It's not because it was edited that way. It's like the, the rhythm is pretty consistent. So we'll, we'll see how it works. I'm sure it'll be some version of of okay <laughs> and so we've seen the owls we've seen the uh we've seen the painted nettle plant and this is the opera oh yes right this is the opera of the, the title is of one of the one yeah. of the films um that uh, one of the dario argento films that is being featured here okay great so um let's let's look at this time you're safe but i'll kill you anyway sooner or later <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Beautiful. <clears throat> so that was, yeah, that I, th that wasn't the way that video looks, but that was like performance art, I think. That was <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> um, it, it was kind of wild to see it that way. But just so you know that, that the, the yeah, that's, that isn't really exactly what it looked like, but I think we're going to provide you with a link that you can look at it later. Well, for people who haven't seen it before, so I'm, I've seen it in on my computer so i know how how it, how it looks and more or less that the fast intercutting is the correct way and yeah. when you saw images that were slowed were kind of frozen or slowed and bleeding over each other in a slower fashion that was just lag yeah exactly so if it, if the if the frame held for a bit that was lag like it's like really consistent it's two frames at a time throughout the entire thing, the pacing doesn't change. Yeah, it's the same thing. And we saw passages that that did do that consistently. Yeah. So I think people no, do have, have got a sense. Of it. <laughs> and, um, and what was completely uh, accurate was the audio. So that that is exact, there's no lag in the audio. That is exactly how it sounds. And um, the thing about, the interesting thing about the audio in, in this piece and in other pieces that I've done uh, used a similar, the same technique, um, is how important the audio becomes to the piece itself. It's like, it's the driving force. The audio becomes the driving force in the video, I think, which is the first time for me that that's actually been the case. Um, because, I, I mean, I, I'm always thinking about audio when, I, when I'm working with my video, and it's always like a, a central component in some way. Um, but it's not always me who's doing the audio or the piece might even be silent, but I'm thinking about audio while I make it, or, you know, it's, it's the, the actual audio is the driving force in this work, um, which is, uh, it's exciting for me because I, I haven't really, I always let somebody else be responsible for the audio. I work with that. Say I work with musicians a lot. You know, I, co I collaborate with musicians and so like you and you for the, the, the first two videos we saw, you were responsible for the audio completely in both of them. And that's kind of, so the, the, the music is still the driving force in that, but it's not me who's resp responsible for it. So that's kind of interesting and new for me. Yeah. Well, I mean, the reason that, um, I asked you to participate in this particular series of, of programming um, is because of your involvement in in the music scene and your your interest in collaborating with musicians, your ear. Uh, I mean, you've you've played quite an important role in in documenting, in um, like intervening in performances, and 
it's just kind of becoming um, a part of the experimental music scene in Toronto in a way that I don't think a lot of video artists are doing. Um, so maybe one question uh, would be, why, <laughs> what, how did you get into that, and what, why are you, what, are, what interests you in, in unusual music? Uh, um, well, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I, I, I grew up in a, a in a music household. Like we, there's always music playing, and um, um, my mother, when I, I remember from when I was like a little kid, was listening to a lot of jazz and classical music, and then my brother would, um, he'd DJ for me, and he'd select records, and he gave me my that between between. The two of them. My dad played a lot of rock and roll, um, and uh, and I got like a a, a very nice music education uh, from that. And it just I I've always surrounded myself with musicians. Um, I'm not a, a musician myself. Um, my mother is an artist and a musician, and um, my brother got the music gene. I got the art gene, if it works like that. And um, uh, that's I. <laughs> Um, I, and I, uh, have always surrounded myself with musicians and, uh, just as a, a way of being in the world. And I fell upon this, this crew. I fell upon, I, you know, I fell upon this crew of amazing experimental musicians in Toronto that like to play all the time. And then I just mm -hmm. to go and listen to music, which is my favorite thing. I like listening to music better than I like watching video art. <laughs> so you told you told me that one of the things, one of your favorite things in art of any kind, is trippiness, um, and yeah. music, mu and music's ability to alter your mood or alter your state. Yeah, I, well, music is is exceptional at that, right? Like music is a mood altering drug. So if you want to feel a particular way or augment a certain feeling that you're that you want to be feeling, um, you put on that tune and um, you put on the, the the right music for for um, for the moment, and it can I, it can transport you. And I think uh, art, m my idea of art at its best, is doing the same thing. Um, and uh yeah that's is is that something that you look for when you're making decisions in 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 making a work of your own oh for sure yeah yeah i'm i'm, I'm usually making things that i want to i want to watch like that's kind of why i make things because i want to see it so uh and i'm hoping that i'm not the only one i'm and i'm sure i'm not i know i'm not the only one who, mm. who wants to see trippy stuff uh psychedelic psychedelic artwork it's a, um, yeah, it's a, you know, it's we call it trippy because it takes you on a trip. It's like a like an acid trip. It takes you it takes you somewhere. It takes you somewhere else, out of your body, out of your mind. You know, that's where it's at. I I hope you don't mind if I extend it, the chat for a moment longer. But I I just remembered yesterday when we were talking, um, we talked about Dan Graham, and yeah. we discovered that his rooftop pavilion. Um, uh, on the rooftop of the Dia Art Foundation, which now no longer is there, yeah. um, was a kind of an important piece for both of us, you know, more than a decade ago. We discovered this in a conversation yesterday, which is kind of uh, unbelievable that um, <laughs> that's not something that we shared before. But yeah, we, we literally just found this out. So um, yeah, Dan Graham's rooftop pavilion at Dia, which is not there anymore, um, is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. Like it, it was totally transformative, um, and yeah, trippy to the max. That that it t you go on a trip when you enter these the, these pavilions. So there's there's more than one. This this one happened to be on the rooftop in New York. So you're seeing like. So it's a it's a it's a big plexiglass. It looks like a big. I don't know if the material is plexiglass. Maybe you know, Josh, what it's, it's glass. Made. It's glass. It's glass actual. Glass. Steel, yeah. Okay. So it looks like a big glass minimalist sculpture, um, and and you can enter into it. You can walk into it like it's a little house 
made of glass and there's glass on the outside and then there's another like little square of glass on the inside and you can kind of walk through this. And, um, uh, but so from the outside, it, it doesn't really, it looks like a big minimalist sculpture to me. It doesn't, it, it didn't do anything for me until I walked into the inside where it just like everything explodes, like all of the reflections and like there's, it's just like layer. This is another, this is like another place where my layers come from. I think like yeah. my, the, 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 the natural layering that occurs from you're looking through the glass you're looking at a reflection of glass behind you and then you're seeing a combination of reflections from other glass and it's all like and it's distorting and, as well and it's totally wobbly and and all over the place and then a plane will fly over top and the sound goes <laughs> like it does crazy stuff it's just you go to crazy town when you go into one of these pavilions and it's it's th the best thing i've ever seen and it's totally informs my entire art practice and everything I do. Like this is go, go to a pavilion, everybody. <laughs> yeah. It, it takes you out of yourself and yeah. um, which is uh, some of us kind of what we're looking for when we listen to work or watch work or make work. Uh, and if you'd like to, uh, if you'd like to find a pavilion near you of Dan Graham, <laughs> you can, you can you can look at a book that I published with Art Metropole, and um, it's still available in uh, a bookseller near you. Uh, but one of the other things, and I don't want to overdo the grand the Dan Graham thing, but maybe in in many of the artists that we're both interested in, humor is kind of important. Mm, absolutely. Thread, and and even in in your title, this time you're safe, but I'll kill you anyway. <laughs> Dot, dot sooner or later um there's a sense of humor and in the the choice of material and the way that it all plays out it's very heavy and it's very light at the same time yeah yeah i i really i really enjoy a sense of humor in uh in in artwork or in in any in film like these dario argento films like they're they're all there's such a beautiful dark sense of humor in in all of them that's in the film that I wanted to capture by that that line is um uttered by the killer in deep red and he's behind a shut door it's just a door <laughs> um but it's like it's now the barrier between him and the person he's trying to kill and he says in this weird voice that's just like you can barely hear what he's saying you really have to listen to it this time you see yeah, <laughs> it's like that. It's just like it's like he's like talking with his hand over his mouth or something like that, and um, uh, and it's just hilarious. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah, the, that's one of the reasons I was attracted to those films to begin with is because they're they just got it all. They're scary. They're funny. They're gorgeous and uh, uh, terrifying. <laughs> okay. So. Uh... We've talked about um, humor, psychedelia, layering, Dan Graham. Um, and, oh, and you just mentioned the doorway. Um, and this actually just quickly brings me back to the first work that we looked at, Ways Home, and this relationship of the body to architecture, um, where architecture is in many ways a kind of a, a drawing of the human body. It's a portraiture certainly an abstraction where you could think of a doorway as a human figure and a, a sink basin as a human face. Um, and at the same time, the camera is kind of like this strange face that like the POV point of view perspective is this kind of strange face that's breaking the air and just going forward. <laughs> you know? And there's something very slapstick and comedic about that as well in those films, those Argento clips. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there was some, there, I, I, everybody go out and watch some Dario Argento giallos. Like that if you don't like horror films, these are still for you because they're not like, they're whodunits. They're, um, and they've got so much, so much humor and uh, I don't know, this is a bad term, but artful, <laughs> it's not a good term. So, but they, they are they are gorgeous. They're gorgeous on the eyes and gorgeous on the ears. And that's why I like to use 
that's why I want to use them as source material because, you know, if you've got really good ingredients, kind of, you can't go wrong. Whatever you make is going to be good. <laughs> well, I know what I'm doing after the screening then. Yeah, that's right. Opera. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, Renee, should we look at um, anything else? What yeah. do you think? Well, yeah, yeah. And what time is it? Do you want to watch one more? Yeah. Uh, should we, what do you think about? No, we won't. We let's let's we'll skip the um, um, uh, the Leone piece. So yeah. yeah so there, there's another work called "Here You Can Only Gain Respect by Killing Other Men," which Renee has made in a similar fashion to the previous um, the pre previous work of uh, hi not hyper collage, but what do you call it? Um, animation video. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Animation. <laughs> um, uh, and it's it's available on on your website. Yeah, well, um, there's just a clip on my website. I think I'm gonna make the um, uh, I'll make the Vimeo um, uh, the Vimeo links available to the audience as soon as we're done. At wherever those can be made available, I'm not sure, but I will make them I will make them available somehow. <laughs> okay. Well, and you can always go to Unusual Music Exchange too to kind of we're gonna. Uh, I'm going to repost um, information, supplementary stuff, and links to recordings on that um, platform after the fact. So, what should we? Uh, so, you could you could check out here. You can only gain respect by killing other men. Uh, there uh, at a later point. What should we go to next, Renee? Um, do a short one. We'll do landscape la landscape number seven. Okay. So now this is a work that. So I've. I uh, mentioned your relationship to experimental music, um, but I often think of you as a composer um, uh, in, in, a, in a visual medium, but you're also working in an audio medium. However, landscape is a kind of a different beast, isn't it? So could you just maybe preface it? Uh, yeah, well, the, the landscapes, uh, they're, they're silent, by the way, and there's, there's 12 of them. Uh, and they're all two minutes and 42 seconds long. And, um, and I'm, I'm gonna read you a blurb right now because it's easier to read it than remember it. Um, uh, in the landscape series, 12 videos, two minutes and 42 seconds each, recognizable video landscapes are transformed through an exploration manipulation of the material of video, that is light, color, codex, pixels, and time and an investigation of camera failure in an attempt to break from the cultural meanings and dominant narratives embedded in the genre of Canadian landscape art. Okay, so that's, that's how I talk about these videos. What we don't know is um, wh why there are 12 of them and why they're two minutes and 42 seconds each, which is not important at all. Um, uh, but I needed a way to organize this material, and um, I had I had hours and hours of these landscapes. And what the landscapes are, I'm using a toy camera to shoot landscape video. I'm just shooting landscapes, a little handheld toy camera, which has a very uh, lossy codec, um, also known as shitty quality, right? So the the um, and instead of like, well, is it shitty or is it amazing? <laughs> so. Um, I kind of zoom into all of the pixel badness until it turns into something different and gorgeous. And that's that's what we're looking at. But when I had like hours and hours of this material to deal with, um, uh, the, the question for me was like, well, how are we gonna, is it gonna be one landscape video that's three hours long? Is it 20 minutes long? Is it five minutes long? So um, I thought of it in terms of an album. So it's like, okay, there's gonna be 12, 12 videos um, because that's traditionally in 70s and 80s, normal number for for uh, songs released on an album and i then say well how long is each one and uh, well it should be they should be like little pop songs they should be like little pop gems and the perfect length for a pop song is two minutes and 42 seconds long and the way we know that is because of patsy klein's crazy which is two minutes and 42 seconds long and it is i will argue it Till I'm blue in the face, the perfect length for a pop song. She nailed it. So, okay, yeah, well, this is landscape number seven. <laughs> all right, well, I have high expectations for the, <laughs> the length of this video. That's right. <laughs>
Landscape number seven. Beautiful. Well, it was like a gem and not only in that perfect brevity, but also uh, it's almost like looking at the facets of a precious uh, stone. Yeah, it's kind of gem-like, that one. Um, it's kind of yeah. like, uh, you could sort of imagine James Bond and Diamonds for, Are Forever, like looking, looking up, up the gem and seeing that. Acid, you know? <laughs> oh, that would be great. Um, the, the, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you the full, the actual full title of the piece. It's um, Landscape Number 7, South Facing Window View Between Long Branch and Exhibition Train Stations, Toronto, Enlarged 7,600%, Blurred 4%, Sharpened 1,687% and slowed down to 3% of the original speed. So that, um, which is, you know, I have to stop making titles that are so long because they don't like fit well on CVs and stuff, but um, that that name tells you exactly how I made the piece, mm -hmm. where I was and then what I did to it. And all, it also points to your, uh, your, your interest in, video as material rather than as some sort of medium for to express meaning yeah no mm -hmm. I, don't. <laughs> I, or I don't i don't do it well but i don't i mean it's not that's never my aim yeah it's to me it's all just material yeah and yet it's uh it's not that it doesn't have personality <laughs> it certainly has that and it has humor and uh kind of takes you out of yourself which is I don't know, kind of a, it's actually a very emotional experience. Well, what do you think, Renee? Should we, uh, should we watch anything else or should we wind up? Do you, do you want to just watch the, the, it's just 40 seconds long and it's like, porch whistlers, yeah. The two Stuart window porch whistling, yeah. Um, cause I think this kind of goes back to when Josh and I met. Um, and this uh, this environment that we were in, and this this group of people that we kind of traveled with, and um, um, yeah, so this is um, it, this is just a documentation clip. Um, Josh was a porch whistler, so the porch whistlers are people that will, if you ask them to, or maybe sometimes even if you don't, I'm not sure about that part, but if you ask them, they'll come and they'll whistle on your porch or your front stoop, whatever you have as like kind of the entrance to your home, they'll come and whistle on it for you. So I invited the porch whistlers um, to, to come and whistle on my front stoop as I projected a, uh, a video out my window. And the video and this would be the first of like a whole body of work that I would do of projections outside my window onto my window for outside for people like passersby or anyone who would gather or look. Um, so this was the, this is from 2004, I think. So a long time ago now, but the, um, it was kind of, for me, it was the beginning of interesting, affordable artist spaces getting torn down and replaced with condos in Toronto, which is just like an ongoing disaster. But um, this was the first one that I was really kind of close to. And these um, artist friends of mine were going to get thrown out of there. They were getting evicted because they're going to tear it down and build a condo. And this, the view that we're looking at that I projected out my window is the view out of their kitchen window, which is one of the most beautiful banal, window views I've ever seen. And it's just some sumac trees. Those are trees that grow in the back alleyways of Toronto. Um, and uh, a, there's a parking lot. So there's a light coming through the these kind of, they're referred to as weed trees because they grow really well and people call those weeds. Um, so these this light coming through these, these trees into a kitchen window that I wanted to save the window view and so that I could put it into my window anytime I wanted to look out their window. So that was the, that's what this is. And then the porch whistlers came and I, I projected this for an hour while the porch whistlers came and whistled on my porch. And uh, Josh will be one of those uh, figures that we see that are, this is like a 2004 camera shot in the dark, everybody. So I apologize for the quality of this, but it'll give you a taste of what it was like.
Well, that was uh, shorter than a pop song, but still perfect. Um, I love that video. And uh, yeah, I think I was one of the whistlers that time. I know that I was a whistler at some point. The por um, port whistlers could be different people um, at any given time. They could be a different group. So, but yeah, I mean, there's people I can identify on there and I can't like, there's a, there's people that I actually just can't identify on that video. Am I, am I right in saying that that was a Ryan Driver project? Correct. Yeah, he was the yeah. Ryan Driver was the orchestrator of that project, um, and then I would go on to do a lot of collaborations with Ryan Driver as well. Love working with music. Which can be found on your website, ReneeLear.com. ReneeLear.com. It's all there. Yeah. Well, that video brings it back, kind of full circle, because in in our first in the first video today that we did together uh, recently, Ways Home. The, I think the window is an important part and the plants are an important part and the whistling uh, is, right. is also. So True. I guess I guess that porch whistler uh, experience and the video somehow seeps in. Yeah. Into us. <laughs> so I think that's that's a lovely uh, place to stop. Um, if yeah. Tom, are you are you there? Do you want to what should we do now? <laughs> yeah, I think this is a great discussion. I'm, I'm glad that we had the time for this. And I think we can encourage people to uh, watch the videos uh, on Renee's website, uh, which I'll just post here in the comments. Um, and also, well, if anyone has any comments that's watching, um, we can uh, have that discussion now. Um, is it Renee Lear? All one word. My website is ReneeLear.com. Yeah, so all one word. Um, I, I, I'm also going to, um, there's some stuff that's not on my website. Look me up on Vimeo. Um, uh, and then I, I'm going to make the the, um, the animation pieces available because they're really fun to watch. Um, uh, yeah, so Renee Lear is my name. And if you just search me on Vimeo, you'll get my, you'll get my channel. Great. No, I, I just really appreciated this discussion. Oh, Josh disappeared. Oh, Josh. Uh -oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, I guess that's it. <laughs> no, but I, yeah, I, I also appreciate your uh, suggestions for films. So we will uh, encourage uh, people to watch the Dario Adjanto films, which we do have through RPL, uh, oh, Regina Public Library. Um, you can uh, get that from our collection there. Um, and yeah, Josh or Renee, if you have any um, further comments, just let us know. We will um, just watch the space and we will post the links to the, the films and you can watch um, with proper streaming capabilities on your ends. And uh, yeah, I do appreciate the, the Wi-Fi we have here uh, and what we were able to accomplish, but um, I'm glad that it, it uh, didn't slow your conversation. Well, can we just... Um uh promote the radio show that will be coming yes. up in less than an hour on cjtr absolutely so we'll have the um as uh, mentioned at the onset uh cjtr is uh supporting four programs with josh uh on the unusual music exchange and i'll post the link here so it's every saturday at 3 p.m and the link is this is soon. our second and this and one coming up is you and renee yeah and so we're just listening to a bunch of songs really and chatting about them from i don't know from from ween to mississippi fred mcdowell to syzygies from japan so yeah it's a great it's a great set list you should definitely check it out lots of good music to listen to so on the screen, you can see the, the quite lengthy um, link there, but you'll also see it in the chat. So you can click on that directly and that'll uh, get you right there. And you can hear the earlier uh, sessions and the ones coming up through this link. Yeah, and if anybody wants to kind of, uh, yeah, if you want to go to unusualmusicexchange.com, you'll see a kind of a, a blog roll, if that's still a word that people use, of, of posts of, songs and, and of, of unusual music um, that uh, uh, some of which we, we have listened to on these radio programs. But anyway, it's a good, it's a resource that we're building. And if you have suggestions for things to listen to, or if you want to ask any questions or find out how to get uh, 
access to some of these um, recordings, you could uh, drop us a line. So, yeah. Oh, and I see Marla Haledi has just dropped a comment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What? That's nice. Hi, Marla. <laughs> yeah, uh, Marla says, thank oh. you, Renee and Josh, and she, she loved the conversation. Oh, thanks, Marla. Another great visual slash audio artist. Yeah, and thanks for also um, to Anna Baraz from uh, YYZ uh, for supporting this project as well. Oh. Alex says, hey. Yeah, thanks, Anna. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thanks so much, everyone. And um, if there aren't any further comments, uh, we'll let you prepare for the uh, the next session. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> yeah. You'll need a rest and a cup of tea. Right? Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> Maybe some whistling. Yeah. Get some headphones. Get some headphones. Yeah. Great. Thanks so much, Josh. Thanks, Tom. Okay. Thanks, Renee. Thanks, okay. everyone. Thanks, everyone.